Okay, today we're going to take notes uh, for your college admissions, college knowledge section. So you should have the study guide for college admissions with you while you're viewing this PowerPoint. First of all, we're talking about GPA. Your definition of your GPA is your grade point average. So that's what should go on the left side under de defined category. You'll also see that in the A, that's a 4.0, B, a 3.0, C, 2.0, D, 1.0. On your notes, it includes a space for F. Using the pattern you see, try to figure out how many points an F is worth. What I'd like you to do next is to calculate your own GPA. If your grades that you recorded on your weekly check-in this week were final grades for this semester, what would your GPA be? The way you calculate that is you take the number of A's times 4.0, the number of B's times 3.0, etc., and you divide it by the number of classes you have. Please pause the video and calculate your GPA now. The next thing we're going to talk about are many of the different tests that you need for college admissions. The first of the tests we'll talk about is the plan test. The plan test helps 10th grade students each year prepare for future academic and career success. Notice what grade that is when you would take that test. The reason this test is important is it gives you a good indication of how you will perform on future tests and where you are in your post-secondary readiness. As a 10th grader at Irondale, you will be required to take this test next October. You will have an opportunity to take a practice plan test at the end of your ninth grade year. Your results on the plan test are used by your teachers and deans at Irondale to help you with your four-year plan and in terms of placement in future courses within the early college program. The next test is the PSAT test. The PSAT test is like the plan test. It's a preliminary test for one of the other college admissions exams. One of the main reasons you would want to take the PSAT test is that it is used by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation as a screening tool. So when you're interested in getting scholarships, the PSAT test is very important. This is a test that can be taken by sophomores or juniors, but only the results from your junior year are used by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation. The next test we want to talk about is the ACT test. You'll see that we actually have two different slides on the ACT test. Please find the section of your notes about the ACT. The ACT measures your college readiness on four subjects, reading, English, math, and science. Notice the English is about grammar and usage, essentially your writing skills. You also will be able to take a writing section when you take the test at Irondale. This test is used by many colleges to determine if you will be admitted to that college or not. You'll also remember that the ACT scores are used to help us understand selectivity. The higher your ACT score, the more selective the school is that you would be a good fit at. Looking at your notes, please indicate what kinds of colleges generally fit within particular score ranges. Keep in mind that these are just general ranges, not absolutes. For example, if you had a 22, that doesn't mean that you couldn't get into a selective college. It would be much more difficult, but depending on the other criteria the college is using, you might still be able to get into your selective college even with a 22 on your ACT. The next test we're going to talk about are the SAT and the SAT-2s. 
The SAT-2s are sometimes called subject area tests. The SAT stands for Scholastic Aptitude Test. It's another college admissions exam. The reason that you would take the SAT or the SAT-2 is that a particular college or university wants you to take that test. So if you have a college or university that you're interested in and they suggest that you take the SAT or that you take the SAT-2 subject area tests, then you should take those exams. Please note that the SAT-2s are one hour long each and they test your performance in classes like U.S. History or Chemistry or Spanish and it enables a college to measure your performance relative to other people who might be admitted. SAT-2s are mainly used by selective and highly selective colleges. The next kind of test would be the AccuPlacer test. Here we have a slide from the Anoka Ramsey website, which tells us what the AccuPlacer test is. AccuPlacer assesses skill levels in reading, English composition, and mathematics. Test results are used to determine the appropriate course placement to promote your success in college. One of the reasons that you would take this is they determine whether you need remedial work before you're ready to do college work. The work that you're doing in your early college seminar class and which you might be doing next year in Foundations of Reading and Writing are intended to reduce any possible reason for you to take uh, remedial coursework in college. However, as you can see, students who are required to take the AccuPlacer often are transferring in our students who are PSEO or who've taken some time off after high school. It's good to know about this particular test and know that it, even though you may have guaranteed admissions to a community college, that doesn't mean that you would necessarily start college level work right away. The next kind of tests we want to talk about are advanced placement exams. Next year, you would be expected as part of the early college program to take advanced placement U.S. history. The way that you obtain, obtain college credit for an AP class is by passing the exam that is given in May. The curriculum in high school will prepare you for that. It is intended to be the equivalent of a first year or entry level college course in a particular subject. Please note that at Irondale, in addition to AP US History, we have many other AP classes, including English Language and Composition, Spanish, Physics, and Studio Art. The last kind of test we're going to talk about is the CLEP. This is the College Level Examination Program. It is a credit by examination program. What that means is that instead of taking a course and then sitting for an exam, like an AP class, you can actually just sit and take a test. And if you're able to pass that test at the proficiency level established by the college, you would get credit for that college course. CLEP exams are not accepted by as many colleges as AP exams. So if you have the option of taking a course and taking the AP test or taking a CLEP test, you generally are going to receive more college credit and are more likely to receive credit from different colleges for taking an AP test. However, there are some subjects for which there is no AP test, things like sociology, principles of marketing, and pre-calculus. For classes like those, the CLEP is an excellent way to earn college credit while you're still in high school. Please feel free to review this lecture anytime. Go back, pause, and take notes on the slides. Thank you.